Hello, ladies and gentlemen, I am Sid Alpha, and as I'm forced to wait to get home from my day job to bring you this particular bit of information, I'm sure by now it's already plastered all over the internet to say nothing of YouTube, but it was discovered early this morning that the Belgian Gaming Commission has finally made a ruling on loot boxes within video games, and much like the Dutch findings from a few short days ago, the verdict for loot boxes being gambling is guilty. Specifically, Belgium singled out CSGO, Overwatch, and FIFA 18. As Star Wars Battlefront 2 EA was included in their list, but the public outrage forcing EA to backpedal on the pay-to-win mechanic within the game actually may have saved them a huge amount of trouble in the long run for that franchise, as the changes they have made to the game means that it does not fall under this classification of gambling. A Belgian Minister of Justice, Cohen Geens, stated that the publishers of these games and games like them, quote, risk a prison sentence of up to five years and a fine of up to 800,000 euros. And if it is found that minors are involved, which is very likely considering these are video games after all, those punishments can be doubled, making it a 1.6 million euro fine and up to 10 years imprisonment. And within the press release the Gaming Commission released, they talk about a number of different aspects of these loot box gambling practices, such as, of course, random chance of the loot boxes, but also some of the manipulative methods employed within these games to drive sales of loot boxes, such as well-known real people promoting loot boxes, the use of in-game currency, the fact that unlimited funds can be spent on player accounts, and the fact that the actual win percentage of individual items are, in most cases, obscured or obfuscated from the player, and yes, I can already feel the Overwatch defenders hammering away on their keyboards, yes, Overwatch does disclose percentages, but as I've stated numerous times in the past, they only disclose the drop percentages of item tiers, not of the items themselves. No, they still absolutely refuse to disclose drop percentages of individual items, and they go to great lengths to keep from doing so. Why? Well, they can shift percentages based on trends and user preference in order to favor some items over others. They do this in order to comply with Chinese laws in that regard, but still maintain the ability to manipulate the player into purchasing more loot boxes. And it works. Activision Blizzard had their best year ever in 2017 without a new Blizzard title for people to buy. The vast majority of their income is derived from these loot box gambling schemes, but if Belgium has anything to say about it, that won't be for much longer. Now, some of you may scoff, but remember that Belgium houses Brussels, which is the capital of the EU, and while the AAA companies might shrug off a country like the Netherlands, the potential that this could be upheld by the entirety of the European Union should be enough to give those companies pause. Also, factor that larger and larger world entities are classifying loot box gambling, how long until the few U.S. states that have already begun their own investigations turns into federal legislation and regulation? What then? What are the potential that Japan, Russia, and China might follow suit? Well, maybe not Russia, but China. China has the largest gaming market in the world right now. If China and the U.S. fell in line with Belgium and the EU, what will the game publishers do then? Now, the basic criteria that Belgium is classifying loot boxes as gambling centers around the concept that money can be spent on these loot boxes, that the loot boxes contain a random item of varying degrees of real or emotional worth, and that the loot boxes are themselves a game of chance. Now, unlike the recent Dutch ruling, there is no concern about whether a person can cash out in any way or not, which means that even closed systems like Overwatch are still in violation of law. And it would seem that the concept of the fact that the loot boxes themselves are a game of chance circles around that whole aspect of presentation and how they are presented to us in similar forms to slot machines or flower machines of that nature. Now, as a result of this ruling, the committee is seeking to implement a number of new legislative measures to regulate the practice of loot boxes. Now, among those measures are a requirement for a gaming commission license to be obtained, which is something that is not out of the ordinary and is again something that casinos themselves must file for. They also require a new icon that will warn adult gamers about the use of loot boxes, and that is specific, not the lame duck in-app purchases that the ESRB tried to peddle off a short time ago. The games would also need to be age-gated as any implementation of loot boxes is illegal for minors, period. Now, in addition to that, win percentages must be clearly indicated as well as the overall amount of money that a person can spend on loot boxes within the game must be limited. 
Now, the last one I think may have been focused more towards mobile gaming, but it does still very readily apply to all games that make use of loot boxes, is that the Gaming Commission will be seeking to make certain that a game does not employ difficulty spikes in order to force a player into purchasing loot boxes in order to progress in the game. Now, all in all, this sounds highly reasonable and not an overreach of authority at all in my eyes. Now, most of this could basically be copy-pasted out of pre-existing legislation for more traditional forms of gambling anyways, so these stipulations really don't come as any kind of surprise. Now, also, what will this do to all the other games not listed here, but who clearly would fall into the realm of illegality under the Belgian ruling? Now, if Overwatch is guilty of this, so is Destiny 2 and Heroes of the Storm. If CSGO is guilty of this, well, RIP PUBG and Team Fortress 2. In fact, all of these skinonomy games out there absolutely fall under these conditions of loot box gambling. And most of them would be flat out unable to survive if these monetizations are to be removed. However, it would seem that that is exactly what will need to happen if the publishers and the developers of these games don't wish to suffer potential fines and imprisonment. Now, to speak frankly for a moment, I'm going to lay my reporter hat aside a little bit and don my industry pundit and commentary hat for a moment. Now, the ESA defended their corporate masters, as did the ESRB. We have dealt with the severe predations of a gaming industry that cares far more about greatest possible profits for least possible effort for so long that even mediocre video game titles that espouse more traditional yet still blatantly anti-consumer microtransactions are heralded as the saviors of gaming. Games that still force us to use credit cards where once there were cheat codes are lauded as examples of video gaming done right. And while there are those of us that do our best to inform and to educate, the regulatory bodies that are intended to be the bulwark against such predations do little more than thumb their noses and protect the corporate masters that employed them. Now, a self-regulating industry is and always has been nothing more than a stopgap measure to prevent government regulation at best basically saving the government the trouble of designing its own regulations for a time. But unfortunately, those self-regulatory methods are no longer adequate or effective if they ever were to begin with. A government legislation is needed to curb unregulated gambling within video games, and the world is slowly waking up to this fact. Four U.S. states so far have begun working towards regulation without fully understanding the problem. Two foreign countries have now stated that these loot boxes are gambling, one of them a major player in the European Union. Now, how much longer will we be forced to sit idly by while game mechanics are cynically manipulated in order to support these gambling schemes to drive microtransactions? How many more times will we see major games publishers flaunt the wishes of their customers in order to make a quick buck? The Star Wars Battlefront 2 EA showed us that together we do have a voice, and that voice can be mighty. Oh, that particular instance was enough to temporarily interrupt EA's cash flow, which was only a minor blip as far as they were concerned, but that was a single title. Imagine what would happen if any and all video games that employed loot boxes were not purchased. That the publishers face the same level of outrage each and every time they tried to get away with it. And with these laws coming into being, it stands to reason that government pressure will soon come to bear to add its voice to ours. But that voice will be backed with governmental power. As soon, games publishers hopefully will be forced to abandon this practice. It's a start, of course, and of course we have a long road to go, but we're taking the first steps. We're taking the first steps to get back to that concept of a good game for a fair price, of an actual market that people can handle, not one that manipulates and cajoles. Of course, that leaves us with our next major battle in the quest for a good game at a fair price, the concept of live service games. But as always, please do let me know what you think down in the comments below. Once again, ladies and gentlemen, I am Sid Alpha, and I'll see you next time.